Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very, very interesting little light right here. This is the MSR D number no. four uh, flashlight here, high power illuminate illumination MSR D four. Um, the reason I picked one of these guys up uh, for myself actually was because uh, this is a crazy hyped light. A lot of people have discussed this flashlight, and I wanted to see what the big deal was, and so I did. And uh, here it is. Um, next thing, let's do a size comparison real quick. This is uh, a very small light actually. Here it is next to a uh, regular AAA and AA battery. So you can see here it's not all that long. Here it is with an 18650 battery, which is what this light takes. And so you can see... Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty small. Um, here it is with a CR-123 battery, and then a couple of direct head-to-head -head comparisons. Here it is against the Thru-Night, um, uh, Neutron 2C, which is one of my very favorite lights for everyday carry, the one that lives in my pack all the time. Here it is against the, um, Thru-Night TC-20, which is a light that is just about as bright as this guy, uh, which is kind of borderline scary, let's be real here. And then here it is against, um, oh, sw whoops, swap things out. The only light in my collection that is crazier than this guy is, that is the Olight X7R, which is um, a, a very different kind of ridiculous, but also completely and totally ridiculous. Then finally, I, I need to put a disclaimer in here. Be careful with this light. I'm going to show you why this light is crazy, but seriously, this light can actually be dangerous to people. Um, because the battery needs to go in head first, there are a bunch of things you need to think about the right kind of batteries. This, among all of my flashlight reviews, it's hard to hurt yourself with one of these. It's easier to hurt yourself with one of these. So be very, very careful and order this with very extreme caution. Probably overdoing it a little bit, but at the same time, please... To be very careful here. So, um, anyways, there we go. Let's go ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this really weird light here. So first off, on the good side, um, this has a, a very nice little uh, interface in that it allows continuous adjustment. So if I hold down the thumb button here, it'll just get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until uh, it reaches the top of its range. Uh, and then if I'm at that point and I hold it down again, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. This is a great thing. It's something I love on the through night to see, um, and it's something I love here. This is really how I think all of these time-gated time, uh, time lights should work. I mean, I understand the desire to go, you know, low medium high, but this continuousness is great. At least they should offer that as a mode. Next thing, the interface on this guy is very easy otherwise, because if you hold on, it starts at the lowest setting, which is very, very low, by the way, which is nice. Um, if you double click, it goes immediately to turbo mode or high mode or whatever you'd like to call it, which is crazy. Um, and then if you single click, it just goes to whatever mode it was on last. So in that case, it was super turbo mega. Um, but that's nice, but you also have specialized modes. So for instance, if I click, if I go uh, four clicks, one, two, three, four, for one after another. It flashes a couple of times. That tells me I'm now in momentary mode. If I press this down, it goes full power immediately. Press down, full power. The moment I release, though, it goes back to dark. And this is great. You know, a lot of people talk about this as a tactical mode. And you know what? I understand that because this is incredibly, incredibly bright. This is like dangerously bright. And you could absolutely blind somebody. So if you, you know, clear in a room or whatever it is that SEAL Team 6 does, then by God, this might work, although I don't know that I recommend this particular light, whatever. But anyways, to go back out of that, you go four clicks again, and you're back into regular mode. Um, You also have a battery check mode, so watch. I'm going to hit three clicks. One, two, three. And it's going to flash out the battery reading. Okay. One, two, three, four. Pause. One. So it's currently at 4.1 volts is the, uh, the, the current uh, reading there, and that's, that's useful. That's good to know. Um, next thing, uh, it has a beacon mode. It also has a thermal override mode, which you can s allow it to get even hotter, which is a little crazy, but nonetheless, it gets a lot of these specialized modes. There's beacon, there's all kinds of stuff. That's good. Next thing, flat clip or uh, flat space in the back so it tail stands nicely, which can be very nice if you're during like a power outage or if you're just in a tent and you want to shine up the ceiling so you get a overall, that, that's a nice little detail there. Um, the firmware on this guy is actually open source. You can modify and program this guy yourself. You need certain adapters. It needs, it's a nerdy approach, but you can do it and that, that's kind of cool. Next thing, this takes a standard flashlight battery. Um, it's just an 18650 battery, although um, there are special 
concerns, you need a very high drain capable 18650 battery. That is an important detail there. But yeah, that's uh, th th that's something to keep in mind. Um, next thing here, uh, we have a, um, it is a high color rendering index light, which means that you get very nice uh, color rendering. I mean, w what that means is that colors look like themselves when this is illuminating them. Unlike some lights which have a very blue cast or something like that, that that's a nice thing. Next thing, this has a bunch of different tube length options. I bought the 18650 body. I believe you can get one for a, a smaller sizes, things like that. So that, that that's always a, a nice thing. Um, I appreciate that they give you that option when you're ordering. Next thing, um, it has a six-click software lockout. So what I mean by that is, right now if I click the button, it just turns on. If I click one, two, three, four, five, six times, now if I click, nothing's happening. You can hold it down. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening until I, one, two, three, four, five, six, click again, and now it goes back to normal. This is nice, and it offers a hardware lockout. If I just give this a little bit of a twist here, it is no longer able to function at all, and so you get two layers of security here. That's actually really important here. We'll talk about why in a bit, but yeah, that's that's cool. Next thing, the price on this guy is really good. It's forty bucks, um, and forty bucks, uh, not including a battery, mind you, but forty bucks is a really nice price, considering that a lot of your budget sorts of lights are in that range. Um, to get something that's this exceptional, plus is just forty bucks. No complaints there. Next thing, this has four different emitters, and what that means is that the beam pattern on this guy is super floody. I'm gonna see if I can kind of put it down on the table here, but what you can see is that there's very little spot to it. Unlike, for instance, this little guy right here, where you can see there's a definitive uh, spot in the middle there. For my life, for the uses I have, which is a lot of indoor sorts of stuff, floody tends to be a little bit better. Certainly, spotty has a role, but I, I do like the flooditude to this. That's that's really nice, and coupled with the high CRI, it just make it really lights up a room. I like that very, very much. Then finally, it's small. It's a very compact little light, and so that's that's pretty excellent. And so to me, all of that is the good here, is that it's small, it's floody, it's 40 bucks, it's got uh, software and hardware lockout, different tube length options, good color rendering, open source firmware if you're a hacker type, um, it tail stands, it's got specialized modes, an easy interface, and continuous adjustment. To me, what is great about this light 100% is the brightness on it for this size. This light can put out 3,800 lumens. This is an amount of light that is, you know, nearly too bright in a, in a small room. This light goes as bright as you could possibly need indoors and plenty bright for outdoors. This light is ridiculously bright. Um, I mean, from a perception standpoint, honestly, and knowing that lumens fall off pretty quickly, it, this is almost as bright uh, in its default setting as this guy is. I know that's not the case lumen-wise, but this big old light is definitely, uh, the difference there is not all that huge, and that's that's kind of impressive, at least, again, perceptually to the eye. This is really amazing in terms of the small amount of, um, the huge amount of light it can put out from such a small little device. Um, it can flood an entire area. It is really cool in that domain, and to me, that's what's great, is the fact that you can get so damn much light out of this this guy almost instantly in such a tiny package. So there you go. Um, on the bad side, first off, the full brightness actually doesn't last very long. I'm going to see if I can show this. Actually, no, I'm not going to show this off because unfortunately, if I do that, the light is going to start heating up, then I won't be able to handle it. Um, but uh, we'll save that one for a little bit later. Um, the, but nonetheless, if you turn this guy on to full brightness, you will see it starting to step down, step down, step down, step down, step down, step down. This is a thermal regulation issue. It has chips in there that make sure that the light doesn't like physically melt, that it doesn't get so hot as to explode your batteries and whatnot. Um, that, that's good, but it means that full brightness is a very temporary thing. It's better for showing off than using it full brightness for any period of time, although given if you're out in the Arctic freaking tundra where it's really cold, this will have a little more brightness in it. Next thing, you can blow through the battery life here pretty quickly. Um, estimating run times is kind of hard with these continuously variable lights, but the thing is, I was able to go from 100% to 67% in like 15 minutes, because what I did is I, hang, I hung this guy off the edge of my desk there, and actually, no, I'm sorry, I stood it up, I went on the highest mode and just let it scale down and let it shoot up against ceiling. That doesn't give you a whole lot of time. Let's let's be real here. Um, and so uh, keep that in mind. Next thing, this is a little harder to find in the U.S. You've got a couple of options of retailers that occasionally stock them. I ended up ordering mine through a Chinese company um, that, that, that actually makes them, and that worked okay. It took me probably three weeks to get the light, but you know what? It's it's cool. No no big deal there. Um, but that is something you're going to want to keep in mind. This is not something you can run down to your local shop and pick up. 
unless you have a really weird local shop or something. Next thing, I'm um, putting the battery in this guy incorrectly can actually damage the light. Most lights have a certain polarity of the battery that they're happy with, and this guy does indeed. The, the, the plus side needs to go on the front here. Um, you can actually tell that you've done it right, because when you put this guy back together and screw everything in, it's going to give me two pulses, which indicate, yeah, I'm happy with the battery condition here. See, those two pulses tell me I did it right. But if you put it in backwards, the light will eventually heat up. The polarity will, that's just, that's a bad idea. And so you need to be very careful when you're using this guy that you put the, uh, the battery in in the correct orientation. Next thing, this is uh, not something that's going to bother a lot of people, but it's starting to bother me. And that's the fact that this has no USB recharge option. Look, it's a super compact light. It's got thermal, I mean, this is really a different thing. But for everyday carry, I find USB recharging way more useful than having a weird battery type that I have to have a charger for, which itself might be USB charged, but still. I'm not a big fan of the lack of rechargeability on here, but again, that, that's kind of not what this is doing, so I can live with it a little bit. Um, something I have a little more trouble living with is the clip. The clip on this guy, unfortunately, kind of sucks. Um, this is the clip that it, you know, you can order it with, and you know, it goes into place. It's okay. The thing is, it just doesn't have that much ramp to it. I just didn't find it to be a pleasure at all to carry, and if you have it in this configuration, it's hang, It's just, it's not a great clip. It works, it's okay, I guess, but it's just not that good. And especially in this orientation, it's hard to even get your pocket into there. This was one of those, you kind of have to lift the clip up and slide the pocket underneath it kind of affairs. That's not great. Then finally on the bad side, this requires, I'm sorry, no, that's not on the bad side. That's just We'll go into the ugly there. Whoops. Um, but that, that then is all the bad here is that the clip sucks. It's got no USB recharge. Um, if you put the battery in incorrectly, it can damage the light. It is less readily available here in the U.S. And you can blow through your battery life pretty quickly, even though the full bright, uh, brightness doesn't last long due to thermal regulation. So, um, on the ugly front, there are two issues here. One of them is that you require a very special kind of battery. Like I said, this requires a high-drain battery. Lithium-ion battery purchasing is already one of the circles of hell. Like, th this is a known fact. Dante didn't have lithium-ion batteries, so he didn't include it, but it, it, that's, that's what's there. Like, the 12th circle he f is, is right there. It's lithium-ion battery pairings. Um, and it requires, you know, it's size such that some will fit, some will not. I know that this particular kind of battery fits, and some people on some forums were helpful in telling me that that was a good approach, but thing is, um, y y you're not going to have, chances are, the correct batteries to use this light, and that's really unfortunate. It's kind of a pain in the neck, honestly, um, and especially given that this has such special needs, the fact that it doesn't come with batteries is not, that I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. Um, I get that they're trying to hit a price point here, and that most enthusiasts will already have something, or will be willing to buy them, but that just adds the difficulty level of this is even even higher. But the thing is, the, the, the really ugly part about this light, I'm going to do a little demonstration. This is dumb as heck. You should not do this. But take a look at this. This is a piece of paper. Nothing up my sleeve here. It's a piece of packing paper. A uh, knife was delivered into me the other day. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down on top of the light. Now, check this out. I'm just going to hit, whoop, fell off there. Hold on. I am just going to hit the turbo mode. I'm going to click this twice. Ready, set, go. Now, I'm shielding my eyes, but see already it's starting to catch some fire here, and I'm hoping shortly that we should see. Yeah, I'm shutting this down. All right. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, I, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> the fiance came home in the middle of that. I needed to open up the door for her. Imagine, just imagine for a second. Think with me. Like, honey, why, why do I smell stuff burning? I'm doing a flashlight review. Why is stuff burning during a flashlight review? Yeah, that's my life now. But anyways, the, the, the takeaway message for this is that this is a really powerful light. And if this had turned on in my pocket, there is a very real non-zero chance that my pants quite literally could have caught fire. That's frightening. And right now, this light is honestly hot to the touch. Even if I just turn it on to turbo mode and hold it in my hand here, this is already... Okay, yeah, that's the point at which I'm no longer holding it. This heats up incredibly fast. Um, that's great, I guess, for getting a whole bunch of power downrange really quickly, but holy cow, guys. This is borderline fright. No, it's actually not borderline frightening. It is just it is just plain frightening. The fact that I can start fires with my flashlight, certainly in a survivalist sense, is probably helpful, but at the same time, oy, oy, oy. 
And so to me, all of that is the ugly, is that it is dangerously hot, it requires high drain batteries, and it will light your pants on fire like legitimately and you don't even have to lie first that's impressive so um let's go into the final conclusions here at some level to me this light is sort of a textbook glass cannon um it, it puts out this incredible light i mean it, it is amazing how much light this guy can put out given the size of it but the problem is like your your glass cannon sort of thing is that you know it does all this performance but it is considerable cost and in this case the cost is both relatively low run time and actual danger. Like, this is a light that is legitimately problematic. This is a light that you could injure yourself with seriously. This is a flashlight that is actually scary. Seriously, do not order this light unless you have the right batteries, unless you know roughly what you're doing, and unless you treat it with the respect that it deserves. Because anything that can light you on fire during routine use is something you should be considering. Mind you, it's kind of weird that I don't give this same, you know, explanation when I'm reviewing a pocket knife, which can absolutely hurt you too. But still, um, that, that's not something a lot of people expect. But nonetheless, um, at, even putting that aside, um, I, I do think that there's a lot of compelling stuff to this light as well. Um, it is not completely a showpiece. It does have some nice features for everyday carry, and that there is no reason that, with due caution, you couldn't carry this guy. I mean, the size of it is great. The, the momentary mode option is great. The Battery check is pretty excellent. Here, let's one, two, three. Ah, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Okay, show me the same thing again. Well, well, whatever. I didn't run it for that long. But anyways, the battery check is a nice little detail here. Uh, it would have been much more illustrative had it dropped more, but I didn't run it that long, so it shouldn't have. Um, but it has the nice lockout options, both hardware and software, which is good because you don't want to uh, set yourself on fire there. And I mean, overall, the, with the UI, it is just, it's great, and it puts out great light. That's the other thing, is that this, this does really make colors pop. This is a great light for going under the kitchen sink to find that one bottle was something that fell back, you know, fell out behind something. That's kind of cool. But the thing is, at the same time, as much as I think it's really kind of cool, it's not my choice for everyday carry, because the clip is pretty bad. I do miss USB charging. That is really a luxury that we should be enjoying more and more. The heat thing remains scary, and frankly, I gotta be honest with you, the incredible power of this guy doesn't win me all that much in everyday life. Uh, life, that is. Um, what good is it, I, I ask philosophically, to have this much power at your hands if you can only only hold on to the light for approximately... Ah, now... And that, that that's not a lot of time. And so if you think to yourself, wow, I would have that much light, then yeah, yeah, you would have that much light, but then you, you, you no, that's a, oh, yeah, yeah. And even the, 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 the switch gets too hot to work with. It's freaking, I don't know. And so we kind of come down to like, well, this is a very small light, but the thing is there are a lot of very small lights out there. Um, You know, the zebra light does some really nice small 18650 sorts of things and that are plenty bright for everyday carry. I mean, the EGTAC D25A, or heck, you can even take the through night neutron. I've been talking about here take out the center pot, put in a 123, which given it'll have less time, but then you're roughly in the same area here. And this is with a light that now you should probably already, you know, own, because I think it's a great piece. But anyways, um, it, it kind of comes down to the size thing. For me, ultimately, actually, the through night here does win the battle. This is the this is a light that I will carry and that I would keep in my EDC, whereas this one is not. I mean, for me, this guy doesn't have the risks of catching me on fire. It's easier to get. It's USB rechargeable. It is absolutely bright enough. I mean, practically speaking, the difference in brightness between these guys is considerable, but practical, I think these are about, they're both what you need. And they were about the same price, given that this is 10 bucks less, but needs a fancy battery, and this comes with the battery included. And like I said, even size-wise, it doesn't need to win. And so ultimately, I, I like this guy. I think it's really, really neat. I, it's a nice little piece here. Um, but at the same time, this has the weird distinction of being a light that is simultaneously really really cool and terrifyingly hot and that's going to kick it out of my pocket in the long term so there you go i hope you find this interesting i hope you don't light yourself on fire if you do pick one of these guys up and i hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day bye now